If you're anything like me, you've asked yourself a couple of questions when introducing science vocabulary. Um, how do I introduce it? When do I introduce it? Why won't they hold on to the word? If you're anything like me, you've asked yourself a couple of questions when introducing science vocabulary. Um, how do I introduce it? When do I introduce it? Why won't they hold on to the word? I always go through a couple of steps when I'm preparing to make a vocabulary video. And the first one takes me an awful long time because I'm historically a classroom teacher. So my skill and expertise is in reading and writing. Science is somewhat new to me. So I have to make sure that I reread the lesson, figure out what the objective and the focus is for each lesson, think about that high impact vocabulary read and reread what's the story for that particular lesson and the next few lessons so I know what words and what concepts students really need to understand in order to keep going forward. Um, I learn about the content vocabulary myself. I look up official definitions. I test out models so that I can really understand what it looks like in real life. And I get rid of any misconceptions. I read about the misconceptions that other people have. Um, and it's funny because sometimes knowing too much, I feel like taints me a little because then I have to carefully curate what I want to reveal to students. But at the same time, I know I can't teach what I don't know. So I have to find out as much as I can. Once that's done, the second step of my process is putting myself in the shoes of my students. So asking myself questions like, what matters to them? What's gonna get them thinking about this content more deeply? And what will inspire them to start asking questions and start wondering? And then I find an angle or a connection to kids' experience. Or I might think about like a common phenomenon um, that will get them wondering. And when I share that with them, I plant questions that they might already be asking. So it's really important to get kids to realize the connection that this science stuff has to their lives. So when we looked at water waves, making sure kids realize that when you throw a rock or an object into a puddle or a body of water or a bathtub, that is the process. You're making waves. You're introducing energy into that body of water. And making that clear for kids allows them to realize that like, oh, this does connect to me. This is something I enjoy. This is something I like. This is something I'm into. When we talk about sound waves and when I introduce them to those different words that they need to know to describe sound waves, we first get curious by looking at Rozelle beatboxing, making it seem like sounds are bouncing all around the room, right? Um, I'm working really hard to get kids to have that access point and see how this content is relevant in their lives. Part three of my process is to find relatable models and visuals. So a lot of times a model might feel a bit abstract. So I always try to go from a real world example that a student will understand and make the connection between that real world example and the model, the abstract model, very clear. Um, for instance, when I made the video on waves 
instead of jumping to that abstract model, we looked at what those words mean in real photographs of waves. Um, and when we talked about pitch in our sound energy vocabulary video, I wanted them to really understand that like a, what a high pitch was. I wasn't assuming that anybody knew that and what a low pitch was. And I tried to use real world examples of very high pitch noises and very low pitch noises that they would know. Oftentimes I try to find a model that's interactive so that if I change a variable, students can see the impact that that has. So they can see what that word or concept actually means as it grows or increases or as it decreases. Interactive models are always better than still lives. So FET is one of my favorite interactive uh, websites where you can create models that will give students a visual for what you're talking about. So here we are at the sound waves. And when teaching kids about amplitude or pitch, you can come here and you can even have them experiment with what happens when you increase the amplitude. Um, and you can see how that looks, but you can also see how that's represented in an abstract model. So it kind of bridges the gap between real world example and abstract model. So the last step that I like to include in these videos, which might seem disconnected from the lesson, is to make sure that I push students to apply this new knowledge to the world they know. So I like to leave them with something to test, something to think about, something to wonder about. And whatever I leave them with, I'm hoping that this will urge them to engage with this new vocabulary. Maybe it's kind of like match the model to what you're seeing here kind of activity so that they can immediately put into play what they've just learned about these new science words or these new science concepts.